Anyhow, I'm here to present um, a study. Uh, I hope the there. So I'm here to present a study which I started in 2015. Um, the presentation is titled Historiography Through Pamamanata, um, Cultural Memory, Pre-Contact Performances in the Catholic Philippines. Um, here, I'm going to discuss three cultural performances. Uh, and these are cases in the proposal that through a deeper understanding of a cultural performance, this may allow an alternative framework on historical processes, and it may open up a remapping and reevaluation of the post-colonial world following embodied practices. So this year, 2021, marks the 500th year of Ferdinand Magellan's circumnavigation of the world, which, as we know, ended in Mactan Island in what is now known the Philippine Archipelago. Magellan's arrival in the Philippines is also the introduction of the colonial religion, Christianity. This year, the Philippines is also set to celebrate 500 years of Catholic faith via Spain's introduction of Christianity during colonization. Now, while the nation is anticipating the celebration of this glorious arrival of new faith, I found myself quite skeptical with regards to some social cultural and social political implications that, in my view, must also be addressed during this momentous celebration. And of all the implications, I wish to focus how Catholicism, through the annotations of the Hispanic friars, altered the transmission of cultural memory and collective identity during colonization. The annotations of you know, the likes of Alcina, De Morga, Chirino and other Hispanic friars about the islands during the colonial times were sent to the Hispanic monarchy. And these annotations described the natives as performers of paganistic acts. Philippine theater historian Doreen Fernandez notes that these performances, while being reported to Spain as invocations to the pagan gods, are certainly the earliest forms of theaters in the islands. Not only these annotations misrepresented the performance traditions of the natives, but they also erased the worldviews and belief systems of the colonized communities by locking them into the archive. Now, this systematic archiving invented the concept of a mischievous and untrustworthy other. The natives, as Diana Taylor puts it in a very different context, though physically present, are acknowledged only to be disappeared in this act of writing or archiving. Colonization transformed presences into absences. They disappeared in the act of writing. Such transformation notwithstanding to the natives, the performances are what Taylor argues to be vital acts of transfer, transmitting social knowledge, memory, and a sense of identity through reiterated action. While the colonizers successfully transformed the indigenous religions, next slide please. Yeah, while the colonizers successfully transformed the indigenous religions of the post-colonial natives into the monotheistic Catholic faith, colonizers were never successful in suppressing the performative aspects of the pre-colonial religions. Today, these pre-colonial snippets continuously appear in different forms in many contemporary Catholic festivals through the performance of panata or pamamanata or sacrificial devotional acts that serve as pathways or perform of performers, meaning the devotees, to their almighty, commonly staged during the fiestas of local saints of the Catholic communities. Despite Catholicism as the theological root of these devotional practices, the origins of the Pamamanata, as told in the narratives, in the oral narratives, and commonly performed by the people through impassioned dancing, are attributed as cultural memories that somehow linked to the pre contact era. As Panata invoking cultural memories, these cultural performances. They comprise that body of reusable texts, images, 
um, and rituals specific to each society in each epoch whose cultivation serves to stabilize and convey that society's self-image. These performances open up a collective knowledge of the past based on the community's awareness of particularity. In other words, Panata assists in a retrospective construction of collective identity, and these Pamamanata embody religious supplications, but ethnographic data of the communities performing them and synoptically looking at the annotations of the Hispanic chroniclers reveal that these performance, these performances also serve as reminders of cultural memories. An example is the Sinulog, a dance festival in the island of Cebu, uh, where the image of Santo Nino or Young Christ is held high in a choreographed dancing along the streets of Cebu City um, every January. Parading and dancing as a panata for about 10 kilometers and between three and five hours, the street dancing culminates in a competition where participating tribes led by a muse from the different towns of Cebu perform a sinulog days dance or a reenactment of the introduction of the venerated Nino in the island during the arrival of the conquistadors. Now, while a muse may be likened to a beauty pageant contestant, her participation is a panata, a prayer for a very personal intention, sometimes related to the quick recovery of a very sick loved one. The sacrifice, according to some informants, she is required to wear a heavy traditional costume and she is wearing a stiletto of three to five inches high. At the same time, she is required to carry the Nino from the start of the street dance to the main competition with a movement demanding her not to bring the image down her waist. And then there is this popular lore in Cebu. Accordingly, slide please. Magellan himself gave Humabon's wife the image of the child, telling her to keep it in place of her idols, for it was in her memory of the Son of God. This was the first appearance of the Holy Child, and it was brief. Lost in translation, she mistook it for a figure or a representation of a child and began a dance consisting of a series of two steps forward and one step backward, which for the locals was the beginning of Sinulog. Nonetheless, Cebuanos understand the term Sinulog in two senses. First, Sinulog literally means the current or the movement of the sea or the river. And secondly, a ritualistic and impassioned dance where parents present their kids, usually infants, holding them high as if presenting them to their gods in the heavens. Several Catholic Cebuanos I met during fieldwork recall the movement as a memory of a very ancient past. Children were venerated and presented to their gods and goddesses. Some recognized the dance as the ancient Cebuanos' affinity to the waters, especially since Cebu is a Philippine province composed of 167 islands. Some informants even remark that every time they see the graceful movements of the Sinulog performers, especially the muses, they are reminded of the movement of the sea, a reminder of how the waters connected all islanders as a macro community and separated them from one smaller community to another during the pre-contact era. However, same informants believe that the dance speaks of a very
Okay. So, continuing, some informants even remark that every time they see the graceful movements of the Sinulog performers, um, especially the muses, they are reminded of the movement of the sea, a reminder of how the waters connected all islanders as a macro community and separated them from one smaller community to another during the pre-contact era. However, same informants believe that the dance speaks of a very distant past where despite differences, all islanders perform the same dance of veneration involving young children. Okay, my second example is in a palit in central Luzon. The community performs an impassioned dancing in the river, locally known Libad, every June in honor of Apong Iru or St. Peter. As the image moves from its shrine to the streets, Devotees begin their impassioned dance and water exchanges. Um, devotees sprinkle or throw water at everyone using pails, water hoses, glasses, plastic containers, or anything that you know holds water. The impassioned dancing continue in the Pampanga River as the image passes by the devotees gathered on both sides of the river. They spray and throw and splash water euphorically. The devotees never run out of water since the river is a never-ending source for the ecstatic water exchanges. This fluvial procession continues for about five hours. During the procession, devotees continue plunging into the water, dancing in pagodas, chanting and singing songs, and exchanging water. In addition, Devotees throw food towards Apong Iru's Pagoda and at each other. Filipinologist Gemma Pamintuan believes that the locals venerated crocodiles prior to the coming of Catholicism. Using as reference her keyword analysis of language in pre-colonial performance texts and comparing it with Fray Diego Bergano's record accounts in his Vocabulario de la Lengua Pampanga, um, slide, please. She concludes that the ritual festival, next slide na po, thank you. She concludes that the ritual festival may have its roots in a pre-colonial crocodile veneration. Pakibalik po. Some informants even claim, pakibalik po sa previous slide, salamat po. Okay, anyway po, um, some informants even claim that every time they participate in the ritual dancing and festive water exchanges, they are reminded of their elders who used to tell them that once upon a time, the Apollo community members were supplicating their nuno, their local ancestral gods, to protect their village from the onslaught of their enemies, the dapu, or the ancient word for crocodiles. Today, there are no more crocodiles in the river, but food offering is still practiced. Surrogating the venerated crocodile to the Catholic image of St. Peter, performing a cultural memory of remembering how the community was saved from floodwaters on several occasions. And one final example is the Peña Francia in Naga City, performed every, every September for nine days. On the first day, a replica of the Lady of Peña Francia, locally called Ina, is brought out from its shrine to the 400-year-old Naga Cathedral. This transference is locally called traslación, literally an act of transferring featuring an all-male ensemble called Voyadores. On the ninth and last day, the image is returned to its shrine following the Naga River route via a fluvial procession called regata. The Peña Francia seems to have normalized an understanding of masculinity as a privileged position. The Pamamanata pushes forward an ideology where women are represented as the opposite of toughness, courage, and strength. The normalization seems real, 
because women devotees themselves fear to be part of a purportedly stampede caused by the performative chaos of translocating the image of Ina on ground on the first day and a combination of land and fluvial processions on the ninth and last day of the ritual and festival. Now, in the annotations um, of the Hispanic chroniclers, pre-colonial women of the archipelago, especially in the Visayas and in the Bicol region, had significant roles in religious ceremonies and oral cultures. One tradition is the Binukot, where women were veiled for protection and paraded to the local village as a manifestation of honor and pride. Fast forward to present day Naga, Veiling is no longer practiced, but protecting, guarding, parading, and carrying the woman before the public is still performed by community members. Nevertheless, a single woman through Ina substituted the Binukot in this Philippine region. This woman, like the pre-colonial Binukot, is now hailed as the most important woman of the community. Parading her onto the streets of Naga City and carrying her on the wagon and on the pagoda are extensions of the pre-colonial pre veneration, prestige, and protection. One informant claims that Ina has to be placed on an andas because only the lowly can step into the dirty streets of Naga City. The Filipino Catholic communities continue to enact their own ritual narratives, supplementing and or opposing the narratives dictated by the official dogma. However, this is not a suggestion that Catholicism corrupted the indigenous religions of the various islands of the archipelago, such as the communities discussed here, Cebu City, Apalit, and Naga City. The point is that, although the Philippines is predominantly a Catholic nation, the process of Christianization in the archipelago does not involve simply the imposition of Western culture onto local traditions, but rather highly variable processes of local reinterpretation and contestation. It is in this context, I say, that the communities discussed in the paper have made Christianity part of their cultures. What I presented is a preliminary proposition that performances are a manifestation of a cultural community in which the pre-colonial lifeways of members are recuperated via expressive bodily movements. At the same time, the legacy of Hispanic Catholicism through Pamamanata is somehow decolonized by rearticulating an indigenous past. In the end, it is proposed that a deeper understanding of cultural performance allows an alternative framework on historical processes and opens up a remapping and re-evaluation of the post-colonial world, such as our country, the Philippines, following embodied practices. This alternative historiography, or the historiography through Pamamanata, owes its performance more than a practice as a way of transmitting collective memory and communal identity. So maraming salamat po. Thank you very much for your attention.